Hi there, I'm Michelle Holmes and the strategy I'd like to share today is to always be on the lookout for ways to collaborate. What I'd love to, for you to start getting into the habit of is seeing opportunities to collaborate and to set up joint ventures everywhere you go because they genuinely are everywhere and joint ventures are the most powerful form of marketing on the planet bar none. You know, when you think about it, people have always thrived the best as part of communities where each person within that community contributes their skills, resources and knowledge for the good of the whole. If you think of a village with all the people inside it and their various roles, tribes with the hunters, the gatherers, the teachers, the cooks, the healers, everyone has their own strengths which they contribute happily in order to benefit everyone else in the community as well as themselves. Now, Imagine if everyone in a tribal village tried to do all of these highly specialised jobs by themselves, it just would be a mess. You know, things wouldn't work the way that they should. You'd have skilled hunters trying to take the place of healers, who'd had ancient knowledge of their elders passed down for many generations, it would just be a mess. But when everyone within a community owns their own strengths, their own assets, and shares them with others, then any weaknesses are instantly bridged and the whole community becomes stronger. You know, I find it fascinating the way that despite the fact that our natural state is to collaborate, as soon as we decide to start our own businesses, we suddenly isolate ourselves and cut ourselves off from the support. If we just look for it, it's all around us. Joint ventures are so powerful because you're effectively leveraging other people's assets in order to create an all-round win. You can achieve anything you want to through JVs, you know, instant credibility in a market that's never heard of you huge amounts of traffic through your sales funnel, any resources you might need to help you create products or market your products or services, the list is endless. And best of all, joint ventures are the least risky marketing strategy around because there's no upfront financial cost for you at all. You know, you literally share the load with your partners instead of doing everything by yourself. And if there are costs, you share them with other people and you also share the success. But as easy and fast as joint ventures are to set up and as powerful as they are when you get them right, very few people actually do make them work and there are a few reasons for that. First, people don't have the first clue where to start looking for JV partners. They don't feel comfortable approaching JV partners and thirdly, they don't approach joint ventures from the right angle. So to take the first point of where to start looking for JV partners, just look everywhere. You know, social networks, your networking breakfasts, your mastermind groups. Opportunities for collaboration are literally everywhere. But before you can start looking for anyone, you need to understand what you want to achieve through joint ventures in the first place. So the first step I'd like to encourage you to take is to spend some time getting reconnected with your business goals again and identifying what would make the biggest impact in propelling you towards those goals faster and easier than anything else. So what is it that you need? You know, perhaps it's as simple as just more sales. Well, what's stopping you from achieving the number of sales you want right now? Do you need help improving your sales copy or maybe you've already got a converting funnel and now you just need more traffic? Perhaps credibility in the eyes of the people who'd most benefit from your product or service is what you need the most right now. You know, would a review or a testimonial from someone who's very well respected in your area of expertise help? Whatever it is, just get really clear on what would have the biggest impact on your business right now. And once you know that, you can start to think about who could help you to get whatever that might be. So if it's credibility you need, think about who already has a relationship with the people who are your ideal customers. You know, if there's someone who could put you on stage in front of a large number of people, then you know, who, who are those people? If you need traffic, that same person could send it to you very easily. And if it's expertise or some other kind of resource that you need, then who could provide you with that? You know, if you already have a list of engaged subscribers or even better, a list of customers, then perhaps what you need the most is to team up with complementary businesses who can offer additional value. Who are the businesses that your customers see before you and who do they see after you? To give you an example, one of the things I do is to help my clients get online with a strong web presence from a website that works to compelling, engaging social profiles. And I've teamed up with a coach who helps people to get very clear on their message and their USP. So if someone approaches me wanting an online presence set up in a way that's going to attract potential JV opportunities and position them in a certain way, then 
but they're not entirely sure how they want to come across and how they want to get that message across, I know I can send them to Lucy and I'll get a percentage of what she charges for helping that client before they come to me and it makes my job easier too. So I also collaborate with a graphic designer, so if someone doesn't have a logo that reflects their message, I can send them to D under the same agreement. And this is a real all-round win because the client gets exactly what they need from start to finish with no gaps at all. I know they're going to be really well looked after. Um, you know, everybody that I work with understands how I work and they deliver a fantastic product or service. My partners get more customers at no additional cost to them. I get a happy client and I get a cut of the profits. Now, the second thing I mentioned earlier was the fact that many people miss out on collaborative opportunities because they're not comfortable approaching prospective partners. They have little list shame or they're overly critical of their product or service and wonder, why would this person want to do business with me? Well, the first thing I want to say here is that I'm going to assume that you've already got a great product or service or you've got a nurtured, engaged list of subscribers or buyers because none of this is going to work unless you do. But as long as that is the case, what's the worst that could happen? You know, they can say no, big deal. Also, it doesn't mean it's always gonna be a no. Most people have already organized the things that they're gonna promote for the next few weeks in advance. And anyone who's got a list of people they actually care about is not gonna oversell to them. And that's actually a really good thing because you don't wanna do a JV with someone whose list is constantly slammed with offer after offer. Believe me, I've learned that one the hard way. If you approach the right people who've got similar values to you in the right way, what normally happens is that at some point you'll do business together. But before you make contact, just take a step back and think about how you can add value to that person because relationship marketing, which is what JVs are all about, is about giving first. And the first step in working out how you can add value to someone is knowing what they need. Do they simply want to add more value to their customers? If so, how can you help them do that? Maybe they want to break into a new market. Can you help them in that area? Think about how you could help them get what they want and just set the wheels in motion. Connect with them and begin nurturing the relationship. And it's easier to do this than ever today because of social media. You've got you know, Facebook and Twitter literally at your fingertips and you can reach virtually anyone anywhere in the world. But as much as I love social media, don't just stop there. Go a step further and nurture the relationship offline as well. You know, nothing's ever going to replace face to face. So do the coffee thing, meet up and get to know each other better. But failing that, use video and Skype and FaceTime wherever possible. You know, just really allow people to see you regularly. It makes a lot of difference when people can get to know your mannerisms and see your expressions and things. Sometimes the written word just comes across wrong, even when the intention is in the right place. So, you know, don't leave it all to email. And make sure you're doing what you need to do to get noticed, but make sure it's for all the right reasons. You know, give first, genuinely approach things from a place of how do I serve rather than how do I sell? And you're not gonna go far wrong here. You know, do whatever you can to add value to help the other person to get whatever it is that they want first. And don't expect anything in return. So if it's content, connections, traffic, whatever, and then once you've established a relationship and you've shown them what you're all about, and frankly, once you've already also decided that that's someone you wanna work with at all because JVs have to be based on trust then you can approach them and do it in a creative way and one which makes it really easy for them to say yes. If they've already seen how committed you are to delivering the good stuff, then they're gonna feel very comfortable endorsing you to their list or putting you on a stage or whatever the case might be. And don't be afraid to be different when you're approaching potential partners either. Um, I once couriered cupcakes with my photograph on them to a very well-known speaker trainer that I wanted to work with and they went down pretty well. Um, we've ended up working together a few times now and we plan to do so again in the near future too. And I've literally secured meetings with people that no one ever thought it would be possible for me to get in front of by sending little hand-picked treats that I knew that they'd really appreciate because I'd spent time observing and listening to them via the social networks. The truth is that the more time and energy that you spend looking for ways to add value, for ways to help and on nurturing relationships, the easier it's going to be for that person to eventually say yes to a JV with you. And speaking of adding value, that brings me to the final point that I wanted to speak about, which was approaching things from the right place. Now this is really, really important. Every JV, every collaboration you are involved in absolutely must create an all-round win for everybody involved. So first, it's got to be a big win for the end user, the client or the customer. 
and then it needs to be a big win for your JV partner or partners and it's also got to be a win for you obviously and if you go into this with a mindset if with, with that mindset you're going to do really brilliantly with JV marketing and being that this is the most powerful strategy on the planet it's going to make a huge difference to your business and your life and the more you collaborate with others the faster and easier and more fun your business journey is going to be and you're going to be able to make your difference and you're living in a far bigger way than you may have dared to think possible until now two heads are better than one and multiple heads are even better than that and there's no doubt there is strength in numbers so in summary get yourself online you know get a website that works one that connects with your audience through your content and your potential JV partners and and you know people are going to put you on stage whatever the case might be make sure your website captures their details so you can follow up and continue to build trust um, and give some thought to the three things that would have the biggest impact on your business in the next quarter. You know, what do you need to achieve your goals for growth in the next three months? Um, you know, really think about who the people are that could help you to do that. Make a list of those people um, who could help you to get the things that would create the biggest impact and start following them on the social networks. But just observe them to start with. You know, what do they talk about? Is there anything that you can help with? Even if it's simply adding value to their conversations, don't go charging in with the pitch. Remember, we're thinking about serving and not selling here. You know, if people ask questions on their Facebook page, you can add value there by going and looking up the answer and posting a link to a helpful article. You know, all of that is adding value. And once you've built up a relationship with them, then you can approach them in a creative and well thought out way that's going to make it really easy for them to say yes to you. Um, you'll need to look into creating agreements at this stage, but if you've done your, your homework and you've picked your partners wisely, the most you're going to need is a simple letter agreement, not some big scary legal agreement. Please use the download that I've created for you below this video to implement this strategy in your business and let me know if there's anything I can help you with. I've included a link to my website where you can sign up to receive more tips and support. I'm actually creating a free mini e-course on JVs and relationship marketing right now, which I'm going to be sending all my subscribers in the next few weeks, so do feel free to sign up if that's going to be useful to you. And I hope that this has been useful to you. And I would love to hear about your collaborative success stories once you've started tapping into relationship marketing and joint ventures. Thank you very much.